Welcome to Unleashed with Eva Melton, where we unleash spiritual principles for victorious living. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Unleashed with Eva Melton. So glad that you are able to join us today. You're going to be excited about today's guest. He's been in Black Enterprise Magazine, um, Birmingham Business Journal, AL.com, but he is doing the work right here in Birmingham, Alabama, and in the Southeast region in the area of finances. And so help me welcome to the studio, Isaac Cooper. Isaac, how are you doing today? I am fantastic. I'm trying my hardest to not smile and talk right now. I'm just enjoying (laughs) this introduction. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, man. I I started looking you up and um, just fascinated about the work that you're doing here in Birmingham, Alabama and in Southeast region. Birmingham Business Journal um, called you a rising star in money. And then also, you know, you have this spread that's in Black Enterprise that was a few months ago. So, but I want you to tell my listeners who you are. Who is Isaac? Ooh. Um, <laughs> so I am, uh, let's see, where to start? So I'm so I'm Jamaican by blood. So both of my parents are Jamaican. 95% of my, my family is overseas. Um, I am Floridian by birth. So I was I was actually born in Florida. My my brothers and sisters, well, actually myself and one of my um older brothers and my little sister we i'll say we're the first generation here in the states my two oldest was was born in coventry um england um what brought me to birmingham was a good man named pat sullivan um i got a football scholarship to sanford university um so that was my initial exposure to the city um and to be completely honest if it was up to me i'd still be playing football so that was Mm -hmm. that was my first route my first love um and then, and then as well just as a as a black man growing up you know that's where you saw opportunity right if mm-hmm. it's other sports uh if it's either you know you want to be an entertainer or a rapper or uh you know if you saw that entrepreneur in your backyard or in your streets that didn't pay taxes you know those those were the ones in which we saw that were able to create change right or at least mm-hmm. uh, uh assess um some of the things that we look to acquire you know over our life experience and so um but yeah played at Stanford University ended up graduating with my finance degree um and and what's crazy I I you know one could say I stumbled into the finance um department but as I reflect on life some of the things that we had to deal with growing up so uh, again both of my parents Jamaican and so We would be in Walmart or a grocery store and my mom would, you know, have a little back and forth with the, with the cashier thinking that Mm -hmm. they did not give her the correct change. And with me growing up in the U S growing up in Florida, sometimes that cashier, I may go to school with their son. I may go to school with their daughter. And so I saw, all right, the only way that we can get out of here is that I need to communicate to my mom that these numbers are correct. And so I found myself calculating math in my head and reflecting the amount before they hit change due. And I saw that every single time that I would say, you know, let's say it's $20, you know, my mom gives them $20 and it's 1872, I'll say, okay, mom, it's gonna be a dollar twenty eight or or excuse mm. me, two dollars and twenty eight cents, right? And immediately it'll pop up two twenty eight and I'd be like, oh my goodness, I got it right. You know, and I would see everyone else's response, but I didn't really put much authority on it. Right. Like again, this is as a as a child ended up taking um, in high school, to be completely transparent, I had a crush on my high school teacher. Um, so I took AP calculus, um, <laughs> ended up getting a D in the class, um, but I ended up getting a four on the AP exam, right? Another soft indicator of, hey, you may be good at numbers, but my mm. focus was football, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so football ended, I, I, I got um, a phone call from a Fortune 100 company And this particular company in Hoover, Alabama, was actually the number one office in the country. Mm. So that immersed me into the financial industry pretty quickly. Um, Their environment was was very competitive, but but more importantly, um, you know, we had we we would have a meeting once a month, which all the advisors throughout the state of Alabama, 
And the first time we had this meeting, I believe it was at the Caraway Davy house. Yeah, it was the Caraway Davy house. We had first time we had this meeting, I walked in, I looked around, I said, well, okay, well, I'm actually the only black person with this company in the state of Alabama. Mm. And with the office that I was, you know, in and being trained in, and with it being the number one office in the country, the type of clients that would walk through, the type of people that would walk through, you see CEOs of companies or, 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 you know, wealthy families that are dealing with generational uh, uh, dollars. Um, Mm. And so it exposed me to, okay, this is something that's not like a normal conversation within the, 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 the people I talk to, right? Mm-hmm. Wealth transfer. Um, and, and so I tell folks all the time, it's one thing to talk about, you know, a trust fund baby or generational planning. It's another thing to meet a recipient of it, right? And so I met a number of recipients of generational planning in that environment. And so while I had my aha moment at that Caraway Davy house thinking like, man, I'm the only black here in the state of Alabama, I said, all right, if I'm the only one hearing this information, who's out here sharing it? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it turned into, all right, well, there's a certain way in which we need to start articulating this information. Um, and then I became a little bit more hungry for history, especially on the history around economics, uh, around Black America and some of the things that, that transcended. Now, we, you know, of course, I, we work with everyone, but specifically in that, in that area. And, and the more I got exposed, the more... Um, crystallized the game plan um, transition into start my own practice. And so in 2016, we launched IMC Financial Consulting. Um, and this is where we are today. And so we, we help people navigate financially. And of course, you have a ton of terms, financial consultant, you can call me a financial mechanic, right? We come in to, to identify the flagpoles and the areas in which you're looking to travel to financially. And we just equip you with the proper vehicle or vehicles um, to get you there in, in an effective and efficient manner. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Now, when I was reading your um, Black Enterprise article, they 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 called you an athlete turned financial guru, and mm-hmm. you started talking about how you began to see your God given gifts as well as your love for numbers. Um, and in a certain point of your life, you started seeing how you can marry those two things together. Can you talk about that just a little bit? Yeah. So um, typically, like just looking at numbers, that's a very binary type situation. Like, all right, one plus one is two. You know, that's not an, an exciting type <laughs> thing to be around. You know, it's just, all right, it's, it's very simple. Um, and when I when football ended, there was a few things that, my antennas went up about, which is one, me being a former athlete, seeing, I believe this may have been around the same time that 30 for 30 going broke came out um, on the 78 to 80% of NFL players that go bankrupt three to five years after their last game. Um, And then as well, me coming to more of an understanding of how money has the ability to essentially um, direct someone's ability to provide for their family Um, in themselves and also the future generation. So financial planning, financial consulting, I saw how numbers and people could be connected with proper principles, right? And it wasn't until I had some self-reflection and I was able to see that, okay, a lot of, of me uncovering this journey was less of me seeking it out, but me finding myself and seeing what was already within me um and putting those pieces together right and so me being at peace saying that okay football that's it um i really (laughs) yeah i really had to uh, identify and and recategorize how i placed football football was ultimately like a little guy right because it controlled my emotions Mm -hmm. it could it it was the thing that dominated my 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 thought process if i had a good practice or a good game i'm excited if i didn't you know and so I had to recategorize what that meant for me. And I saw that that wasn't just it for me. And, um, and I never forget this. I'm getting chilled. I'm thinking about it. My godparent, my godmother, she shared with me, never forget because Auburn, we played Auburn, um, November 19th. And that was the last football game. And I remember sharing with her not too long after afterwards, just how distraught I was, how confused I was, like, because I really didn't know what I was going to do. And she said, Isaac, the good Lord will put you on your back just for you to look up. Mm. And, and that was a time in which I had to look up. Um, 
and was I just I really just allow that to uh, uh, allow that faith to to I would say have authority for lack of a better wow. term and so so yeah that's that so being able to see how numbers again so I, even me going all the way back to a child seeing that all right growing up even though I, I had a, a, an a alternative agenda when it comes to getting out of Walmart that was essentially me sharpening that skill right that was mm-hmm. me sharpening this skill you know again I had an alternative agenda signing up for AP calculus, right? Thinking I may have a shot as a high school teacher. <laughs> but it was, you know, another reminder, another flagpole to say like, no, you're actually good with numbers. And I love people, love helping people. That's just, I feel like that is ultimately the true joy. And so when I saw, when I was exposed within this company, what numbers could do when it pertains to money and guidance and principles, especially when it pertains to, you know, changing one's bloodline or shifting one's uh, um, trajectory financially, I said, I okay, I can one help athletes, right? But but two, mm-hmm. help families, help households. Um, if I'm able to convey this information in which they can receive it, and so that that was definitely um, part of marrying it too, for sure. Wow, and, and right use of money is definitely a spiritual principle. It's definitely a spiritual principle, and I think a lot of times we overlook that, but. Um, until we're really able to accumulate some wealth in our communities, there's some things we're not going to see change. So I just appreciate you seeing, you know, a lot of times people try to separate money from spirituality, but it really goes hand in hand. And I'm just really even getting um, more wisdom in my life in this particular area. So it's one of the reasons I wanted to interview you. But another question I wanted to ask you, um, you talked about you know, if you had to give someone advice and you said for them not to discount quiet time, you know, what has quiet time done for you? Mm, mm. Woo. Um, so uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, every time I, I'm i laughing because it just I, I have to reflect within within it. I, I actually share with someone today. I was like, man, if you want to strengthen your faith or if you want to, you know, get mm. closer to God, start a business. Right. Wow. And and that that quiet time, what it does for me um, and I have to wake up early in the morning, make sure that that is the first thing that I do. And mm-hmm. sometimes I'm not as consistent as I would like. And so it may be, mm-hmm. you know, 1145 in the morning. I'm like, hold on. The reason why I don't I feel off base is because I haven't been able to. Um, I'll, I'll say get direction or mm. um, crystallize steps. Right. And. Um, so that peace, that that stillness, um, we 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 live in a world now in which you know communication and technology. Ultimately, your phone could be buzzing all throughout the day, all throughout the night, from news notifications to emails mm-hmm. to text messages, and so that uh, specifically that quiet time. And and this is the reason why I said don't discount quiet time because being. I'll just say me me personally, I feel effective when I'm doing something, right? Like I got to be up doing this, doing that. I need to be, I need to be moving. And so that's why I really actually didn't enjoy reading when I was growing up because I was still, right? Like, no, nah, I want to, I want to go live what I hear. Like, no, nah, just, just tell me what it say. Give me the, give me the, wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll, I'll just go live that out. Um, and what I found is that, okay, it's kind of, you know, going back to script a little bit, it's kind of the difference between, you know, sowing seed and scattering seed. And, oh, wow. and until I got my quiet time, if I would, if I didn't get my quiet time, I'm scattering all day long. Wow. When I'm, when I'm able to centralize myself, then I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit more, I'll say not a bit, a lot more effective and efficient with the steps that I take and the words that I use. Right. And, and it's just, so that quiet time, I feel like you're ultimately just to use like a, a 2019 terminology. You're ultimately just hitting the refresh button on the browser, right? Hitting wow. that refresh button, making sure that you know there's no, you know, slowness within the page and the operation of 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 your computer. But uh, but yeah, the quiet time is 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 necessary, especially especially if you have you know, responsibility outside of yourself. And so it may not be a business, it may be your family, right? It, it, mm-hmm. it, it may be just clarity on how to move day to day um, uh, with the decisions that you have. And so, yeah, that, that quiet time is, is, is hands down one of the most effective 
um, areas of, of that's been able to grow in my life in regards of just priority. Yeah, that's awesome. I actually, you know, I have that. I feel off if I don't have quiet time in the mornings. Mm. And, and some days it's a quiet time while I go walk, you know, by myself. I do yeah. a lot of stuff alone. Um, but it's it's one of the ways I, I have to do a lot of different things. Like I can get bored very easily. But as long as I have time alone, it's some days where I just may write out affirmations. I may say affirmations. But that quiet time really helps centers me. And, it, and I think mm. when I'm rested, I am more productive. Like when I've yeah. slowed down to be alone and that rest is not necessarily that I need a nap or I need sleep. Sometimes that's what it is. But once I slow down, I feel like everything that I do after that is, has more, um, I guess you would say force behind it. Mm, that's a good word. Yeah. That's a good word. Yeah. 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 So you, you talked about something else in your interview with black enterprise that just really, you said a lot of great things, but there's another thing that stood out to me. Um, I think they asked you about when you had to prep for an important meeting meeting and you said that you actually kind of imagine like you actually visualize, um, you know, you do your research, but you began to visualize that taking place. Talk to me about that. Where did that come from? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. Um, so one of the one of the main components of I'll just say football is watching film, right? And before we identify our opponent, or before or once our opponent is identified, schedules laid out, we start watching film on. And so I play defensive back. And so playing defensive back, my job is to make sure that that guy in front of me doesn't catch the ball or either within my vicinity, but based off of the coverage. Mm -hmm. And what what we look for, well, what I would look for is tendencies, right? Okay, well, all right, whenever he puts his left foot up and, you know, and the quarterback signals this, he usually runs this route. Or what, so watching film allows you to start um, um, picturing yourself if you were in that scenario, even though the game has yet to start. And so I just apply that to the business to where instead of me riding to a meeting and I'm about to sit down with someone that may potentially become a client and I'm listening to some music or the radio, I would start articulating what I need to say because with what we do per se in regards of helping someone financially, they're they're ultimately not walking away with like a car, like nothing tangible. They're not walking away with you know, a widget, right? It's the words that we use to convey, you know, mm. um, uh, to communicate what they need to do to address their situation. So the last thing I need to do is be sloppy with my words, right? Wow. And an, another added pressure, just to be completely transparent, me being a, only black, black in the state of Alabama while I was with this company, I couldn't wait. I, I couldn't waste nothing. <laughs> I, had to, I, I had to make sure that I, I was, um, very effective and efficient with it. And so, um, yeah, so that I, I just started implementing that. And I saw that whenever I got into motion and got into rotation or, or the meeting started, it just, it came out fluid because actually I just said it like three minutes ago, you know, or I just said it five minutes wow. ago. Um, so yeah, so that I, a lot of, a lot of the principles um, of just activity uh, for the business, I just recategorize or repackaged what I learned through sports mm. or football um, and just deployed it within this industry. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. So we're going to shift gears. I want to talk a little bit about um, IMC, but do you have ways that are on social media? Say that one more time. Ways on social media. What was the, do you have ways for us to reach you on social media? Yes, yes, yes. So we have, um, of course, Facebook, our, our business page, IMC Financial Consulting, you can find us. Um, and then as well, Instagram, we have a business page, same thing, IMC underscore Financial Consulting. Um, uh, website, www.planningimc.com. Let's see here. And then you could find me, you know, personally on, on social media, Isaac M. Cooper or Isaac Cooper, Facebook, um, Instagram as well. We use the hashtag planning a lot. And so you'll see, you'll see some of that mm. and also some, some merchandise coming with it. Um, so we feel like planning is the, is the foundation of change in some form of fashion, right? The plan may not be 
uh, done to a T. Like, hey, I want to save the X amount by the end of this year, but we at least got to have some type of flagpole to give us an indicator to let us know that we got some movement, right? And so um, I'll use a sports analogy, and it's maybe a little corny, but ultimately, you know, if you think about your favorite basketball team, favorite football team, I don't know the last time we watched a game of our favorite team and we didn't look at the scoreboard, right? And so wow. the, the plan ultimately is like the scoreboard to ensure that before the end of the game, right, the end of the month, end of the year, end of the quarter, whatever it may be, we have some type of metric or data, data to inform us uh, of our progress mm. or, um, or if we've flatlined. But, but, yeah, those are our Facebook, Instagram. You can find me on Twitter as well. Um, on planning 22 on Twitter and then Instagram planning two underscores 22. But if you find our business page, you'll be able to find all of our team members as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you described yourself as a financial mechanic. Um, you know, a lot of times I think this is an area of life where you find a lot of people really don't talk about finances. Is there, I think a lot of times we may feel like we've got to be at a certain point to come see a financial advisor or a financial mechanic, as you said. What what do you have to say to that? Yeah, and that's actually a part of the, you know, I would say that's probably one of the main ingredients behind IMC being launched. Um, because working with you know, a Fortune 100 company, they had a few prerequisites uh, when it pertained to a prospect or an ideal client. And some of those things was, hey, they need to make X amount in income. They need to have X amount in savings. They need to be able to invest X amount of, what, whatever it may be. And when I looked mm-hmm. at those, those metrics, I was like, well, I ain't got nobody to call then. You know, because <laughs> you know, <laughs> Don't fit, you know, I don't even know what I'm doing here, you know, and, 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 and while I thought about that, I said, well, that shouldn't discount them from knowing the information that it takes to acquire them, right? Right. And so for us, our thing is, if you care about your family and you are willing to be, willing to be transparent and more importantly, uh, willing mm-hmm. to ch- make any changes or adjustments to accomplish the goals and the objectives that you're looking to lay out, we don't necessarily have a minimum, right? Our minimum is more so character than it is uh, compensation. Um, Wow. And so a lot of, um, and it's unfortunate because to your point, it's a bit like that is probably the most uh, consistent response or thought of, well, I got to get my money in place or I got to get this in order or I got to have this amount saved up or I got to get this squared away before I can have a conversation with, you know, someone like Isaac or have a conversation with, with IMC. Um, and our response is like, no, our job is actually to help you get there. <laughs> right. Wow. Like we want to get you to the point to where you, everything is stabilized um, because it's not, it's actually, it's not an intellect issue. It's, it's not a, uh, well, you know, you didn't get your degree in fine. That's, that's not the issue. All, all of our clients are highly educated individuals. Even if, even if they didn't even go to college, highly ed- educated individuals. Um, it's just the amount of time that we have in a day, right? Mm-hmm. And so the last thing folks want to do is wake up on Saturday and be like, "Yeah, I'm gonna put together a budget." Like that's you know that's not attractive. Nobody wants <laughs> nobody gets excited <laughs> about cash flow management and budget. And so, um, so yeah, that's it's, it's it's a valid concern and a valid statement. Um, and again, we just got to make sure that people are aware of their options when it comes to help but also mm-hmm. don't delay the help by thinking that you got to get certain things in order, right? And okay. so I'll go back to a, a, a car analogy. You know, you, you don't want to say, all right, once I get my oil changed, I'm going to then tell him that I knew I need a new engine. Like, no, we need to know all that now before we even address the oil change, right? And so it, it's, it's, it's funny because I'll, I'll get a number of um, kind of like one-off questions. Hey, what you, mm-hmm. what you think about this product? Or what you think about this? I'm like, look, I can, I'm going to answer this question, but until I can see up under your hood of your finances, right, until I'm able to see everything, that is the only way I can give you a confident response, right? Wow. Um, and so, but yeah, I didn't mean to keep going on a rant on that, but yeah. That, no, you're good. Important. No, this is good information. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's definitely a valid statement, valid concern, because the industry has created it that way, right, mm-hmm. where... 
you know, I, 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 I say this facetiously, but, you know, there's a lot of folks that walk around with commission breath, right? There's folks that walk mm-hmm. around with, you know, very transactional. And, and again, that's another reason why we started on practice. We're not held to a quota. There's no company that we work for that, no, there's no, you know, you can look at the bottom of our card. It doesn't have another company. No, this, this is IMC Financial Consultant. We own 100% of it. And our process is literally curated for our, our clients, right? And, and we want to ensure that there is an environment to where not only you feel comfortable, but you feel confident that you have the tools and the resources to be able to accomplish your goals and objectives. And as we get there, we'll educate you on how these tools work um, to ensure that while you're at the dinner table and, and you know, cousin or, or son or daughter may ask a question, you could at least speak to it and which will pique their interest because generational transfer happens within the household mm-hmm. from the neck up first, right? Wow. Um, and, and that's where we have, you know, we, we make sure that we're, we're very uh, mindful of that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you guys heard it. He said, number one, you sh- if you care about your family, number two, if you're willing to be transparently transparent and third, if you're willing to be flexible. So all in all, Isaac, you're saying that IMC is accessible to anyone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. Most definitely. Oh, Most that's definitely. so awesome because, like you said, sometimes the industry has painted this picture that you have to almost already be there yeah, to even get assistance. Right. So we thank you for that. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to interview you. I'm hearing more and more people say, hey, I have a financial planner or, you know, we're investing in our 401ks. But what does it look like to actually have a financial planner coming behind you to just say, hey, you can do this differently or is that you're, you're set. So having that one on one interaction with somebody that you trust. Um, and so before we go, is there anything else you wanted to tell us about you or IMC? Uh, let's see. You know, we, we're, we're growing. We got a team, uh, my business partner, um, DA, I actually met him, um, at this fortune 100 company. So I was leaving, he was on his way in and we crossed paths years ago to the point to where I was in his wedding, um, to, to, to now he actually ran track at Mississippi state. So he's a former athlete as well. Um, and we, and we really just had the same rhythm and synergy when it pertained to, um, I'll say specifically what the black community needed, uh, but also we knew that we were equipped to deal with anyone. So we have clients across all races, um, but when we look at some of the economic disparity that's happened, um, I won't go too too far back, but uh, all the economic disparity post, um, you know, 1850, you know, there's been some areas in which um, mm-hmm. we feel like we can help address with our process and our intentionality. And so, Excited to have him on board. We have a uh, another gentleman. His name is uh, Marn, Marn Ho Chong. He's actually from Malaysia. Uh, he's a recent Sanford grad. He started out as a, he was our second intern, and now he's with us full-time as our financial specialist. Um, and then we have a few other consultants that work with us as well. And so, um, but yeah, IMC, we, we, we are here to help, here to listen. More importantly, that's, that's really what it boils down to is like us listening and, and ensuring that we are clear on what you're looking to get accomplished. Um, because our three pillars is one, the first pillar is exposure, right? And so once we get exposure into where you're looking to go, the goals you're looking to accomplish, time frame you're looking to get there, our second pillar is education, right? So let's make sure that you are aware of how these vehicles work. That's going to get you into these particular, you know, uh, objectives. If it's, hey, I'm trying to reduce my debt. Hey, I'm trying to increase my savings. Hey, I'm trying to uh, have some additional dollars for retirement. Um, we educate you on those vehicles, but the last pillar, which is actually the most important, we tell our clients this all the time, which is execution, right? So we'll tell you, we'll tell you, once you tell us the coordinates in the GPS, right? You punch in the coordinates in the GPS and it says, all right, it's going to take five hours and 15 minutes to get there. Our job ultimately is to say, hey, if you're looking to get there in five hours and 15 minutes, I don't think you should be driving a Hummer, right? And so we, we assess the vehicle in which you're looking to get there and then say, all right, let me educate you on how to use this vehicle. Um, but at the end of the day, we ain't the one driving it. You're driving it, right? So it's still up to you to execute. So we can put the best mm-hmm. plan in place, educate you on that plan. But unless you, uh, you know, and, then, and if you don't execute that plan, the plan, you know, it falls by the wayside. Now, do things happen? Yeah. Do unexpected expenses come up? Very much so. We definitely understand that. We're very realistic about the process. 
Um, but we do, in, we do uh, not only um, support you in the midst of execution, we, you know, we, we, we encourage you, right? And so we're, out of anybody, we're, <laughs> we're your biggest cheerleader. And, and again, I literally just got done with the meeting prior to this, and I was clapping, I'm fist pumping, like, oh, yeah, your credit <laughs> score gone up. Because it's exciting, you know, because for one thing that I, we're able to enjoy, because another aspect what I realized is that we're, we're actually a top three conversation. Mm-hmm. Or I say a top five conversation between someone's relationship with God, mm-hmm. someone's relationship with their spouse, right? We're in there after like best friend, your financial guy, because we, we, we're, <laughs> and, and, you know, we, we fly right. Fly, you're right, you know, and, and, and we don't take that lightly, right? There's times in which, you know, I've gotten a phone call, hey, Isaac, you know, we're pregnant. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, congratulations. They're like, yeah, I'm about to call my mom. I'm like, what? You haven't, you haven't told them yet? <laughs> There's been times I've gotten that phone call. She's like, yeah, I'm about to tell my husband. I'm like, what? Hold on. Now. Tell him you call me first. <laughs> but their immediate concern was finances. Yes. I got to be financially in place for this. And then on the flip side, right? So that's when, when you're bringing life into the world, that's a celebration. Then on the flip side, it's like, hey, man, my brother passed away. Uh-huh. There's an influx of money coming in. We don't know what to do. It's already an, emo- it's a, it's already an emotional disaster. We want to make sure it's not a financial one, right? Um, and then on the other side, you got, hey, Coop, because we, you know, we do some planning and uh, for, you know, those kids. Hey, Coop, my daughter wanted to let you know she lost her first two. Hope all has been well. I'll get that text, right? Or, uh, look, I'm getting chills. I'm thinking about it. Or, <laughs> you know, birthdays or even today somebody's credit score was, you know, 750 plus and that was something that we talked about prior to our engagement like just those wins so i'm able to celebrate that with them right mm-hmm. and, or man it's so many hey man i'm thinking about proposing and now they're married with a child like man you remember when we held budgeted for the ring you know just all those life events again we don't take that lightly and that's why wow. we're very intentional with our process because one of my best clients actually was crazy <laughs> this was probably like six seven years ago yeah, I had a client made less than thirty two thousand dollars a year. Mm. Over a five year period he ended up saving twenty seven thousand dollars. Wow. Great saver. Wow. And this is what we discussed. I was like, look, all right, so this is what you're bringing in a month, this is what you're this is what it's gonna be after tax, this is what you're gonna be this is what your expenses is looking at. Like he was like, Man, you know what? I actually like my parents are cool. <laughs> Let me see if I can stay with them over this X amount of time period so I can save my money. And that's what he did, mm. sacrifice, right? And we were able to put together a robust savings goal in which he was able to, um, you know, have 25 grand saved up, liquid cash to be able to do, you know, whatever we had on the game plan. Um, but again, if, if we said, hey, you got to make seventy or $100,000 and up to be able to have a conversation, we would have never had that experience, right? We would have never been able to see that discipline be exemplified in a manner in which, because there's a lot of folks that make a hundred grand, but spend 105 each year, right? Uh-huh. Um, so, uh, well, yeah, let me get off a rant. I'll get into a rant. You have to just go and cut. No, but you're, it's what you're passionate about. So I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so go ahead and remind us. I've enjoyed our conversation, by the way. I just, yeah, I've enjoyed it. Uh, look forward to following up with you soon, but go ahead and tell our listeners again, your website. Yeah, so www.planning, P-L-A-N-N-I-N-G-I-M-C.com. Um, oh, yeah, we have a 1-800 number, so 1-800-658-5702. It'll prompt you to whoever you want to speak to, either myself, uh, DA, or Marn. Um, and then Facebook, again, just IMC Financial Consulting, that's F-I-N-A-N-T-I-A-L. And then consulting spelled, spelled out with the ing at the end, um, and then you can find me on all the you know social media channels from LinkedIn to Twitter to Instagram. Not on Snapchat like that. Um, <laughs> I can't get with Snapchat. I just yeah, don't understand it. Yeah, 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 too too personal um, for me. Twitter. 
Right, right, right. I, I, I knew Snapchat was an issue. As soon as you open the app, the camera is on you. Like, hold on. Now. How are you even going to flip this camera around? Um, but yeah, that, that's uh, that's how you can get a hold of us. And uh, and we're, we are located in, of course, Birmingham, Alabama, Inslee, specifically downtown Inslee. Um, that's where our office is located. And um, yeah, so that's us, IMC Financial Consultant. Awesome, everybody. So we just heard from Mr. Isaac M. Cooper, CEO, financial guru, financial mechanic, as he called it. Uh, look them up. We're just so happy that he came to hang out with us today. And Isaac, if you will remain on the line. Um, but thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you for having me. And thank you for me, me being able to share this platform with you. Thanks for listening to Unleash with Eva. I hope you were inspired, encouraged, and motivated to tackle a new week. For more information about the show, check out www.evamelton.com.